Howdy folks, welcome back to our fifth grade science series. Today in Earth and Space Sciences, we get to talk about the hydrosphere, the geosphere, the atmosphere, and the biosphere, and how they all interact. So let's get to it, Science Rocks. All right, get out that science notebook and get ready to take some notes and draw some pictures. So go ahead and copy down these 19 vocab words. Remember, they go in ABC order like this and just come back later and create your own definitions of those words. So go ahead and pause this if you need to finish writing down the terms. So everything in the Earth's system operates within these four major systems, all right? The hydrosphere, the biosphere, the geosphere, and the atmosphere, okay? So let's look at the hydrosphere. So the hydrosphere is made up of all the water on the planet. So this includes water in the solid, liquid, and gas forms. So the ocean is part of the hydrosphere and most of the water on earth is stored in the ocean. And then we have the biosphere. The biosphere is made up of all the organisms that live on the planet and their interactions with one another. So animals such as these zebras are part of the biosphere. So are plants, so are humans, so are microorganisms. And then we have the geosphere. All right, the geosphere is made up of all the physical elements of the Earth's surface, crust, and interior. So it includes soil, sediments, and solid and melted rock, but it also includes landforms such as mountains, volcanoes, and caves. And processes in the geosphere include things like weathering, erosion, deposition, volcanic eruptions, even earthquakes. Okay, so the solid and melted rock of this volcano are part of the geosphere. And then the atmosphere, okay? The atmosphere is the thin layer of gas that surrounds the earth. Processes that occur within the atmosphere include winds and weather fronts. So the earth's four main spheres are interdependent meaning that they readily interact with each other and depend on each other in order to function, okay? So the Earth has those four main spheres, um, the hydrosphere, biosphere, geosphere, and atmosphere. And these systems do not operate separately, all right? The, they interact in ways that affect the Earth's surface its processes, and even its organisms, okay? So some of the processes in the hydrosphere include the evaporation, okay, and the precipitation of surface water, and also the infiltration or seeping um, of surface water into the ground to make groundwater. So these processes are all part of the water cycle, which allows, um, which involves the hydrosphere, right, water, but can also involve the geosphere, the atmosphere, and the biosphere. So for example, um, surface water, which is a part of the hydrosphere. When surface water moves into the geosphere, when the water seeps into the ground, um, that would be the hydrosphere and the geosphere. And when liquid water evaporates from the Earth's surface and rises as vapor into the air, so part of the hydrosphere is leaving the surface of the geosphere, and it's actually entering the atmosphere, okay? Um, when gas phase uh, water in the atmosphere condenses, it forms clouds, it's okay, it's called condensation, and it falls to earth as rain, all right? So the water is moving from the atmosphere to the geosphere. So the biosphere and hydrosphere interact when a body of water, such as the ocean, provides a location and other resources for an ecosystem to exist within. So um, also when animals release moisture into the air by breathing or sweating, this is an interaction between the biosphere, the atmosphere now, 
and the hydrosphere. So dolphins living in the ocean represent an interaction of the biosphere, okay, and the hydrosphere. And the geosphere and the hydrosphere interact when water or ice weathers, um, erodes, or deposits soil, rock, and sediment. So, for example, the hydrosphere interacts with the geosphere when glaciers flatten portions of dry land. So, glaciers are part of the hydrosphere and they interact with the geosphere. All right, the geosphere interacts with the atmosphere and the hydrosphere when um, mountains create something called rain shadows. So these form when mountains push warm, moist air farther up into the atmosphere where the air cools and or precipitation forms on one side of the mountain, okay? So because most of the moisture usually precipitates from the air, by the time it reaches the top of the mountain, it rains much more rarely on the far side of the mountain. So the area on the dry side of the mountain is called a rain shadow. All right, let's look a little bit more into the hydrosphere and the distribution of the Earth's water. So the hydrosphere is made up of the Earth's water in all its forms, right? Liquid, solid, and gas. Liquid would be like water, solid, ice, and gas would be the water vapor. So the hydrosphere covers about three quarters, three fourths, or 75% of the Earth's surface. So most, like 97% of the water in the hydrosphere is salt water. Okay, saline, salt water. And it is contained in the oceans and in the seas. So that leaves about 3% of Earth's water that is fresh water, okay, which is water without a high salt content. All right, and Earth's um, glaciers and ice caps store the largest amount of water other than the oceans and seas. The glaciers and ice caps contain 2% of Earth's total water and about 69% of the Earth's fresh water. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of fresh water, but 69% of it is in the ice caps and glaciers. So a large part of the rest of the Earth's fresh water, about 30%, is in the ground, okay, groundwater. Uh, liquid surface water, such like water that's in rivers and lakes, makes up less than 1%. Okay, up here, less than 1%, actually about, um, this surface water is about a tenth of a percent of fresh water found in the hydrosphere. So Earth's water exists in solid, liquid, and gas forms. It can be found in the atmosphere, under the ground, and on the Earth's surface. So about three quarters, remember, three-fourths or 75% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. And Earth's liquid water collects underground in um, aquifers and on the surface in oceans, rivers, and lakes. So surface water can be found in the solid state like snow or ice and glaciers. All right, um, the groundwater. Earth's groundwater is water that is located below the surface of the ground, okay? Groundwater can be collected um, in underground aquifers. It also fills the spaces between particles of soil and rock. So humans can get water out of the ground through wells um, and springs, and groundwater provides fresh water for about half of all um, Americans. And then if you look at the um, surface water of oceans, rivers, lakes, and um, glaciers, the ocean is a huge body, huge body of salt water that covers most of the Earth's surface. So the ocean is divided into four parts by large pieces of land called continents. And rivers, rivers are natural streams of fresh water that empty into oceans or lakes or other bodies of water. And lakes are large bodies of water that are surrounded by land. And lakes can have salt water or fresh water. Okay, um, they can be large, but they are often um, small enough um, 
to see the other side even. Um, lakes are mostly, mostly stationary, so they're not really flowing. And then you have glaciers. Glaciers are very large sheets of ice that sit on top of land. Glaciers are found where it's so cold, like high in the mountains or near the Earth's poles. And glaciers are their frozen um, surface water. All right, make sure to watch these two videos. The first one is more about the geosphere and biosphere. And then the second one is more about the hydrosphere and atmosphere. All right, practice questions. Number one, about three-fourths of the Earth's surface is covered with what? Is it covered with water, land, trees, or roads? Okay, so about 75% or about three-fourths of Earth's surface is covered in water. Okay, so A, which appears um, blue from outer space. So this water includes all the oceans, lakes, and rivers, all the water on the planet. Number two, Jeffrey used a stream table as a model to show how water erodes soil. So as he sprayed water on the stream table, some of the soil was carried to the end of the table. Jeffrey used his stream table to model an interaction between which two spheres? Okay. So water erosion is the result of interactions between the geosphere and the hydrosphere, okay? Between the geosphere, like the soil, and the hydrosphere, like the water. All right, so we're going to go with C. All right, number three. Sarah lives beside the ocean in Eureka, California. Her pen pal, Ruby, lives in Redding, California, which is located inland, okay, not right by the ocean. So as a school project one year, Sarah and Ruby decided to collect local climate data and compare the average monthly high and low temperatures from their cities. The data they collected is shown right here in the table. So based on the climate data that Sarah and Ruby collected, uh, they can conclude that what? Okay, so we've got the months, January through December. We've got the Eureka average high temperature for each month, and the Eureka average low temperature for each month, and then the Redding average high temperature for each month, and the Redding average low temperature, okay, for each month. So pause it, read it over, and see what you think. Okay, so bodies of water warm up and cool down more slowly than land. Okay, bodies of water warm up and cool down more slowly than land. This causes bodies of water to have a more constant temperature. So because the temperature of the water affects the temperature of the air above and around the water, areas near the water tend to have a more constant temperature. Isn't that cool? So the result of the stabilizing effect of oceans on the climate is that locations by the ocean typically do not get as cold in the winter or as hot in the summer as locations that are located inland. So we're gonna go with C. All right, number four. Which of Earth's topographical features can affect weather patterns? Would it be mountains, lakes, oceans, or all of these? Which ones could affect weather patterns? Okay, y'all, it's gonna be all of these. All of these features can affect weather patterns. Oceans and lakes uh, help to keep temperatures on the nearby land more constant, like we talked about. They also increase the amount of moisture in the air. And mountains can affect weather too. Air carrying water vapor travels over mountains, but as the air is forced up over the tops of the mountains, the air cools. And this causes the water vapor to condense and form clouds and moisture from the clouds precipitates and then the drier air then travels over the mountain tops and down the other side. Last question, number five. Which spheres of the earth are involved in the water cycle? Is it the hydrosphere, the geosphere, the atmosphere, or all of them? 
Okay, it's going to be all of them. All of them are involved in the water cycle. Remember that water runs down a land surface. Um, when it does that, it's moving from the geosphere to the hydrosphere. And water that evaporates from the surface of a lake is moving from the hydrosphere up into the atmosphere. And then water that falls as rain is moving from the atmosphere um, down to the land, to the geosphere, and then back into the hydrosphere. So it's going to be all of them, y'all. Okie doke, after you have fully mastered all of this, you should be able to create a project or a presentation or an experiment or better yet, a model. You should be able to develop a model using an example to describe ways the geosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and or atmosphere interact. And then describe and graph the amounts and percentages of water and fresh water in various reservoirs to provide evidence about the distribution of water on Earth.